Hey everyone, it's Julian from Digital Trends and I am here with Google's latest smartphones, the Pixel right here on the right side and the Pixel XL. It's the second generation, uh, sorry, to be exact, it's the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. As you can see, the design is almost the same and at this point it's starting to become this iconic design for the Pixel. You know, you see this two-tone glass and metal back and it's, it's what you'd think of when you think of the Pixel. Uh, more or less the design is the same. Uh, the glass over here is a little raised. Uh, it used to be below the fingerprint sensor or go past the fingerprint sensor, uh, but now it's a little raised. Uh, the antenna bands are gone and apparently they are in this glass as well, so it actually serves a bit of a purpose now. And uh, you have a single camera, of course, when everyone else is doing a dual camera, but we'll get uh, more on that later. You got the SIM tray on the Left side, power button and volume rocker on the right side. They're very clicky keys, I like them. Uh, we got the charging USB-C port over here and sadly, if you don't know yet, there are no headphone jacks on either of these devices. So that's a bit of a bummer for a lot of people. Uh, Bluetooth 5 is on board, uh, so at least that's sort of a consolation for if uh, you have wireless headphones or wireless earbuds, but uh, these do not have headphones. Uh, what you do get in the box is this little dongle. Everyone was making fun of Apple, and I'm pretty sure Google actually poked fun at Apple last year when, uh, when they had a headphone jack in the original Pixel, but now you get this little dongle in the box that you can plug in to the USB-C port and you can plug in your headphone jack in here and that's uh, that's how you listen to music unless you have wireless devices. So let's take a look at the Pixel 2 first because uh, let's be honest, it's a little more of the more boring device. Uh, it's $650 and you know, Right off the bat, it looks like a phone from 2015. Uh, it has those huge chunky bezels on the top and the bottom. Uh, it has the same five inch screen as the original Pixel, and the bezels are actually pretty similar. The good thing is at least there is a purpose for this chunky, battle, chunky bezel on the bottom now. Uh, front facing speakers, dual front facing speakers, and they're stereo, uh, so they sound actually pretty good. Uh, let's maybe do a little quick demo. See, one of the things I really like is that before, if I was sort of holding the phone like this, my fingers would be blocking the bottom firing speaker. And that's not just the case with the Pixel, that's the case with a lot of smartphones that have bottom firing speakers like the iPhone and the Galaxy Note 8. So this is obviously always a plus. Uh, it gets pretty loud and the sound, it never really gets any like tinny or anything. It sounds well balanced. Uh, it just sounds pretty great overall and it's just so much nicer having front facing dual speakers rather than a single or a bottom firing speaker. So that is a plus for me, uh, except, you know, of course, if you really are an audiophile, you probably wanted that headphone jack. So this screen right here is a 1080p resolution. Uh, it's again, five inches. This is an AMOLED display and it's believed that HTC made this device, but, uh, and, and it's believed that the Pixel 2 XL is made by LG. Uh, that's sort of why I guess the design has been consistent with last year's Pixel. Uh, of course, again, the difference is really here with this back material and the fact that the glass is a little raised. This is um, this is a little metallic, uh, it's aluminum coating, I believe. Uh, it feels really nice, kind of like a chalkboard almost. Uh, it's very matte and kind of nice and grippy. I know some people don't like it, but uh, I do, and it just makes the phone feel kind of nice. Of course, it doesn't feel as premium as like a flagship like uh, iPhone 8 Plus or the Note 8, uh, but those are all glass and probably are more fragile. Um, but overall, I think the design is pretty solid for the back. Uh, the front is kind of why I don't really care for or like the regular Pixel 2 that much because it just looks super dated and it's like 2017, you're getting all these phones with bezel-less designs. And, and to be fair, this phone over here doesn't quite have that edge-to-edge -edge design. It does try, 
and it gets pretty close, uh, but of course it's a little chunky, but I kind of like it. I think it looks a little like a window uh, looking into like this beautiful display over here. And I like how the edges are curved over here and the whole dis design is just a little more curvier and, and it looks, looks really pretty in my opinion. Um, but this one really is kind of like, yeah, you can kind of, kind of ignore that and just keep looking at that all day, especially because they got these cool live wallpapers that you can see if you can see this. It's kind of like a cinemagraph. The waves are crashing over here. Uh, and this one, I believe I have cars driving on the highway. Performance on both devices is really great. Uh, they're running the, the Snapdragon 835 processor with four gigs of RAM. And really, we haven't really seen a lot of issues with performance. Maybe there's like a little occasional um, stops and slowdowns in a game when you're like trying to load it or something like that or when it's trying to load an ad but otherwise like i it's really hard to have this phone cause any issues um, even when daydream view the vr headset that google has when we plugged it in and we were playing some games yeah the phone got a little hot but and after a long uh, play time then there was some sputtering because it was just a little overheating uh, but in general uh that's that's after a long play time and you really have to like you know try to be able to get this thing to slow down a little but even then it you know it's overall performance is just really impressive and it's all thanks to that integration of hardware and software that google can do and of course that a35 chip is definitely a beast so quickly looking at the pixel 2 display the pixel 2 xl display it's a six inch screen and with uh, 2880 by 1440 pixel resolution. Uh, it's real sharp and it's a P OLED display as opposed to the AMOLED on the Pixel 2. Uh, really hard to really tell the difference. Um, they get equally bright, enough to be viewable in the daylight and uh, direct sunlight. And just the blacks really are really inky dark and the colors just kind of pop off the screen. It doesn't feel super saturated, the screen at all. Uh, it feels actually real quite nice. Uh, when I compared it to the iPhone 8 Plus, it was a little cooler and the iPhone 8 was a little warmer, but that's al almost always been a bit of the case. Uh, overall, it's just a gorgeous screen and I really like how it's framed with these uh, bezels, even though some people might not like that. So just wanted to make a quick mention that this is of course an 18 by 9 aspect ratio versus the traditional Pixel 2 has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, doesn't really impact much. Uh, for the most part, most Android apps should automatically be able to scale. But the nice thing that other phones like the LG V30 or the Note 8 did is that you could have the option to force apps to scale uh, so it didn't look as weird as this app. Now it doesn't, again, it's kind of hard to come across this and I've, for the most part, I have come across this in uh, games mostly. But as you can see here, there's this chunky bar over here and it just generally, uh, there was another game that I also saw, just chunky bars on both sides and it looked weird and it just was there because the app couldn't scale and you couldn't force it to scale. So. Um, this game, for example, I guess is just hard-coded to go by that 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, so you might come across that, and again, I've been, uh, there's, there's just no option. And there's, a, there's an option to change the display size of the screen, but it's not necessarily the same thing as forcing the app to scale. So one of the new other additions in the Pixel is a feature that's actually kind of from the HTC U11. It's called EdgeSense on HTC's devices, but it's called Active Edge on the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. Basically what you can do is squeeze the phone to trigger Google Assistant. Now, what's kind of neat is that, of course, if you're one-handed, you don't want to like open the phone and press the home button, which is the normal way to trigger it, or you can say, okay, Google, that's also a way to do it. But if you don't want to do that, this is a handy way to do it. But at the same time, we really would have kind of liked uh, the option to uh, tweak, I suppose, uh, would be the word, and choose what we wanted to use it for. Uh, that's actually the case on the HTC U11. You can actually customize the squeeze to do certain functions and open different apps. But Google is kind of limiting it, almost kind of like Samsung with the Bixby button. Uh, right now it just says squeeze for assistant. Sure, there are a few other functions you can use it for. For example, when the screen is off, you can open the assistant and it'll still open when the screen is off. Uh, I can actually try that right now. 
like that. And the other thing is that if I'm getting an incoming call, I can squeeze it and it'll silence the phone. But we really would have been nice to see an option to, you know, maybe choose it if I don't use a system that much. And maybe I can open uh, my own app or, or a specific app or, or a function or use it in the camera, for example. Uh, that'd be nice. But uh, a hero of this is a squeeze sensitivity. So if you feel like you're someone that just is constantly squeezing your phone for some reason and you're worried about it, you can make it a firm squeeze. Again, if you want it to be able to be accessible really easily and quickly, then you can make it a lighter squeeze. Uh, and of course, you can just totally turn it off. You don't want that at all. It's kind of gimmicky. Uh, I like it though, uh, especially again, as I mentioned, when uh, I'm, you know, my hands are full and I don't want to really say, okay, Google out loud. And I also, don't want to press the home button, it's a perfect way to do it. Uh, I just haven't really been using it as much as I want to because I'm mostly because I keep forgetting that it's an actual feature I can use. But another cool feature is called Now Playing and it basically is this ambient discovery, music discovery feature that uh, basically if you walk into a restaurant or a store and there's music in the background, it'll sort of detect what the song is playing and it will display it on your ambient display. Now it's not meant to be a discover function. Uh, if you want that, it actually now works in Google Assistant. Uh, and actually I'm pretty sure that's a new feature that's basically all you have to do is say, what song is playing? And it'll try and detect. Now that's been there in the old Google search function like this. You could add what song is playing? And it's been able to do that for some time. Uh, it's finally now a function, oh, I guess it's just searching the song, but it's now finally a function in Google Assistant. And so back to the now playing feature, uh, let's give it a quick demo. So the way it works is that it's working off a database of songs that changes every week. Uh, so we found it works best obviously with pop songs because that's I guess what is playing most often and maybe Google is trying to train it to recognize those the most. Um, but let's get some Joni Mitchell. It's cloudy. Turn that down a bit. And let's just sort of go back to that always on display. What should happen is it'll just show up over here. Uh, it might take a minute and I'm talking over it so it might be taking some extra time. But it's meant not to conserve a lot of or take, take up a lot of power or battery power. Uh, and it's just a nice kind of feature that, you know, you kind of glance at it if you were interested or not. And you can double tap it to access it in Google Assistant as well. Oh, there we go. So it just showed up. Both sides now, it figured it out. You can double tap it and it basically searches it again in Google Assistant and it'll show you there and you can, you know, jump to YouTube, Google Play Music or Google search about it. So again, it says it works offline and never sends songs or conversations to Google. So that's kind of the neat thing. It's all on device. Um, you really, you know, if you want to turn it off, you can, uh, but it's, it's neat that they're sort of changing the database of songs every week as well. Um, so, you know, we have had issues trying to play, uh, when we try to play some more obscure songs, uh, it really is geared to more popular music, things that sort of a lot of people just know. Uh, you know, if it's from a certain song that you really don't think anyone else is going to know and you hear it somewhere and you're really interested, your best bet is to just ask Google Assistant or maybe download an app that does that like Shazam or SoundHound. Battery life on both phones has been pretty okay. I think uh, they're, they're pretty similar in terms of battery life. Oh, this one has a 2700 milliamp power battery and the bigger one is a 3510 milliamp power battery. And you should generally expect just about a day of, like if you're using it a lot with streaming, uh, browsing, playing music and things like that, uh, taking pictures especially, uh, you can expect it to perhaps get to about 20% by 8.15 p.m. That's, that's what I usually end up getting. Uh, and that's fairly okay. Um, when I'm not using these phones as much, uh, they obviously don't uh, die as quickly. And for example, I used it light to medium use yesterday and I ended up with about 45% around 10 p.m., 11 p.m. So there's definitely, you know, obviously if you're using it more, you're gonna drain the battery faster, but uh, it really kind of depends on your usage. Uh, for me, I use my phones a lot typically and I've 
been sort of unimpressed. Uh, the LG V30 really stood out for me uh, in terms of battery life. This one's been okay, um, manageable, but certainly makes me anxious that I should always feel like I need to carry a cable around just to make sure that these things don't ever die on me. So let's talk about that camera. Of course, Google uh, had the one of the a widely regarded camera on the original Pixel, and this one, I am happy to say that we think it is definitely the best smartphone camera in the world. And there are a couple of reasons why. And, and well, for one thing, D Google doesn't do that whole dual camera thing that a lot of manufacturers are doing, including Apple, for example. Uh, single lens, and they're saying that they can do a lot of these dual camera functions like portrait mode uh, with just that single lens and a lot of software processing. So uh, 12 megapixel on the rear and eight megapixel on the front. Just overall, I think the first thing that you'll notice is that everything is just so fast and smooth. The interface is super easy to deal with. You know, taking photos is quick and there's virtually almost no shutter lag. Processing is a lot faster than what I experienced HDR Plus to do on the original Pixel, uh, especially portrait mode, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but just generally, um, my problem with last year's Pixel, even though I thought it was a great camera, is that a lot of the images came out a little too oversaturated. Uh, that's not really the case anymore. I think Google changed it and they sort of look a little more realistic. Um, but let's talk about that portrait mode because this used to be called lens blur and what you had to do was take a shot and then you had to move the camera up so it could gather that depth information. But now Google is doing that all through software without needing you to do anything other than just capture and press that button. So just have to tap to focus. You don't really need to do much else. Just make sure that the thing that you want is in focus. There we go. Sorry, my hand is wiggling all over the place. And I keep clicking on something else. There we go. So just tap. There you go. This isn't the best lighting in this room, but it did a solid job. You can see that it accurately discovered the edges and even with that stuff in the background, it detected that that was definitely further away. And the blur is almost perfect. Like obviously the blur over here is a little stronger than what's here because this is closer to me. Uh, but I am really impressed and continually impressed with what this can do just with software. And it's far better than lens blur on the original Pixel and other Nexus devices. Um, for example, I do have a comparison shot here that I took with the, this is the, uh, so this is the Pixels, Pixel 2 XL's uh, portrait mode. And this is the iPhone 8 Plus. So this one is just a little too bright and I mean, it looks great. And, and overall, I think it's a great shot. It's a little too bright for my tastes, but my issue really isn't about brightness. It's about over here. So the face is in focus. It's great, fine. But over here, this hair is actually a little out of focus. Like almost the entire hair is out of focus. Everything over here, it really starts to get perfectly in focus right at the eyebrows and then continually down here. The blur is great though, it really kind of looks like that DSLR blur, uh, but just this area over here is just a little blurry and of course you can see the fine hairs are kind of also blurred out over there. Pixel 2 XL is a lot different. Um, the blur isn't as intense as the iPhone 8 Plus, but the lighting looks just a lot more natural and realistic. And again, again, continue to be impressed about how accurately it gets and you can actually see each individual strand of hair in this now of course there's a little hair up here that is a little blurry but you can see far more detail in the hair right here compared to this one it's just fuzzy blurry and again great shot both but i think this one is definitely a better one uh, a better and it's just it's just continually impressive that you know this is a dual camera system doing portrait mode and this is the same thing but with just a single lens and software so it's really impressive of, of course if you really want better bokeh then the you might want to look to the iphone 8 plus but 
again, the, everything isn't perfect here. Like over here, it does look a little weird because it doesn't necessarily get this part right here blurred right. But overall, I would definitely prefer this picture. And there are, of course, mistakes. For example, over here, we tried to do a little selfie, but I think maybe it just identified the plane that we were on a little wrong. Uh, she's in focus, but we are not. Uh, so, so it's not perfect. And again, the same thing happened here. She's in focus, we're not. It's not perfect. There are, you might have to do a shot twice or once, but what other, the other thing that really did impress me the most is the ability to use that portrait mode in, uh, well, on your selfie camera, because a lot of people would probably want to do that. And I really like this shot because, well, the lighting was great because it was by a window in the mornings. This, though, is still impressive to me that I just took this with a smartphone because it just, this is the selfie camera. And I really don't expect much out of selfie cameras even to this day. But this, I just think the quality of the shot is great. The bokeh is, is not as strong as something you'd find on the iPhone 8 Plus, but it still looks really nice. Uh, of course, it's darker, so it's a little harder to tell, and there's just not much going on in the background, so it's, I guess, framed a little nicely. But just in general, this portrait mode on the selfie camera is very impressive and will probably wow you, and I've definitely seen get a lot of people have definitely been wowed when I've shown them uh, or have them taken selfies with that portrait mode. It's, it's really impressive and I think that's why it's, it's partly my favorite camera and I think it's why the best camera on any smartphone period. And one of the cool things is this thing called lens blur. It, oh sorry, not lens blur, Google Lens. Uh, what it is is basically it's uh, image recognition, kind of like Samsung's Bixby Vision. Uh, it's this little icon here and basically when you're taking shots of specific things like landmarks, it'll be able to detect it, movies or album covers, books. Uh, one thing is like it can scan QR codes and barcodes, but it can also detect like numbers, emails, addresses, and then it'll pull up all these details here for you to interact with. It's kind of neat, but it won't really work on everything. So like, for example, if I tried to do, let's see, this picture of my dog, it just says Northern Breed Group, which I guess it's trying to detect. That's not what my dog is, but I guess it's just trying to guess. Uh, yeah, it says best guess for what's in this image, and it's it's a wrong type of breed. That that is definitely not my dog. Uh, for but this is kind of cool. Uh, this is what I was saying. It works with landmarks, so it'll, it's going to detect that it's the Flatiron Building, and you get some data right here. Uh, it's it's not something uh, I can't really see myself using this that much. It just doesn't feel that useful. Um, even if it was able to do a little bit more and search different stuff, it's one of those things that like you have to keep reminding yourself that it's a feature that you can use. It's not something that I don't think I would actively keep using. Only maybe for the uh, the the fact that it can grab images of uh, or, or it can grab text of numbers and addresses. That that might be useful. And the other thing that I want to show you guys is motion photos. And this is kind of a, you know, taking a page out of Apple's book. Uh, it's basically live photos from iOS, but uh, it's called motion photos. And uh, let's turn it on. But basically it's taking three seconds of video when you tap the shutter icon. So let's just move that around. Let's go over here and you'll see this thing called motion on. So when you, oh, it's off, there you go. So yeah, it, it basically kind of detects, the software detects where to start and end it so it can loop it best. Um, but you're, you know, taking a few seconds of quick video on every shot, you can turn it off if you want. Uh, it'd be nice to see some more effects that you could use these with, kind of like iOS 11 has bounce, loop, long exposure, but right now you're kind of limited to that. Uh, it's, it's again, kind of gimmicky, but not something I prefer to use. I'd rather just leave it off.
Of course, uh, one of the best things that you guys all might like about the new Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL is that they're both IP67 water resistant. That means that you can take them up underwater uh, about 1.5 meters uh, for 30 minutes and you should totally be fine. And I know this is gonna sound weird, but I totally showered with this phone and it was awesome. Uh, worked out really well, didn't have any issues, uh, just had to dry it and and it's actually a kind of a nice way to clean it because one issue that I do have is that a lot of dust gets picked up in this uh, speaker grills on the front, uh, the top and the bottom and just overall on the sides, especially with this case that they uh, gave us. This is a little bit of a fabric type case, kind of like the Google Home Mini texture. Uh, and when you put this in there, the, the dust just lines up right on these edges and you know, I think the best way to clean it is just to give it a dip in the water. So that is the Google Pixel 2 XL. It costs $850 and this is the Google Pixel 2 and that costs $650. That is a pretty good price. $650 is a pretty great price for a phone that has uh, a great camera, uh, awesome processor that's super fast and an overall just great smartphone experience. Um, 850 is a lot more to ask, you know, it's, it's similar to the pricing of the Note 8 and the LG V30, uh, but you know, for fast Android updates, if you care about that, a uh, great overall software experience, um, fast, speedy performance, you know, I've been using the Pixel, last year's Pixel still to this day, and I haven't really seen a dip in performance, so I'm expecting this phone to continue that and be just as fast next year this time. So. $850, we think it's one of the best Android phones you can buy. Yes, the headphone jack being gone is terrible and I really wish it was there, but you know, wireless headphones aren't, aren't that terrible as well. They are more expensive and this is of course a pain, in, a pain to carry around and you might forget it, but uh, you know, overall I think the package is great and the headphone jack is something that I am okay with sacrificing just mostly because of the camera that really ties everything together and gives this phone a 9 out of 10 from us